Welcome to the Phasing Line Podcast. I am Marty KC1CWF. He is... I'm Sterling in Zero SSC. Everybody knows you, but I'm like the, the underdog here. Everybody knows you. From You're like that, that kid who went viral on the internet. Well, you went viral on the internet more than I did. No, you went viral. I just ran a, I started a YouTube channel that got, I don't know, 15 views one day, and then the AWR was like, hey, write for us. And I was like, okay. And then I got pretty popular, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And then you like... Went to college and like everybody knew W zero triple E. I went to college because of W zero triple. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say that, but you mostly that, ham but radio true. mostly influenced my decision on going to Missouri University of Science and Technology, which is home of W zero triple E, um, the best ham radio collegiate ham radio club I mean, in America. I would say so. I mean, other people would argue. I think Stanford would ha- like to have something to say about that. But it's pretty <laughs> but, awesome. So what we're doing a podcast, aren't we? What is this we're doing? I thought we were just like talking to each other. Pod- podcast? Oh, that's right. So yes, we are doing a podcast, but this isn't like any of the other podcasts. So what's... No, I'm going to cut you off. So what's two people and a... What's the, the term for what we're doing? There's a fancy two word. Two lids and a mic. That's the term, right? That should actually be the name of the podcast. Somebody told me this podcast should be two lids and a mic. The The topic, what I'm talking about, is two guys or two people and a mic, meaning it's two people who have a conversation around a mic. It's just kind of like an organic... We actually happen to have the same mic. Yeah, well, that's randomly. weird, right? We have the same mics. Can I... Can I we have the you know same how I lamp. bought this mic? Well, how'd you, how'd you buy it? This, this guy called Sterling Coffee made a video that I'd say went viral. Viral. Five years ago, I, I'm probably. I'm going to tell you how many views that video got. And he had like a TS850 at W0 AAA. And it's he a does Kenwood this thing radio, where they, HF radio, the TS850. A Kenwood radio. I gotta say, I've, I've loved the ICOM 7300, but that's a good radio. I like the older, the, the older Kenwoods too. And he has like this mic boom and he does school cr- club roundup and he gets all these amazing QSL cards. I'm like, look at this guy. He's totally studying for all his classes. N- never, never in the ham radio shack. And he has great audio. And like, I didn't have an HF radio yet. And I almost bought a TS850 TS because I thought I'd have really good audio. But then he does this thing with microphones and he's like, look at this boom arm with a MXL 990 condenser microphone, which is, you know, condensers, condensers. Yada, yada, yada. I'm not a huge thing. Condensers are great. Not for him radio, but besides the point. Um, and then he goes, here's the MXL 990. And with some music, movie magic. It's a Heil PR40. Here's a Heil PR40. I also watched the video. I happen to. I have it here on my YouTube watched you list. You know that guy too? And it says it was watched and it happens to have 48,473 views. Spoiler alert, I made the video at uh, W0 Triple E. And that's why I have an MXL 990. Well, so it's not a bad mic. You're, you're listening to the podcast on two MXL 990s and that's because it's a $30 microphone. It sounds decent. It's a condenser, but it still sounds okay. Except when I do that, it sounds... Really annoying. You probably deleted this yeah. podcast since I did that. But I also did a... Nobody's listening in the first place. Right. Remember That's that. the thing. Hopefully we are entertaining enough to get people to listen to us and then we can make millions of dollars with all of that beautiful, glorious ad revenue that we will soon have. So, so now maybe we need to do this. If you're still listening, you got to go to Twitter. We are at Phasing Line or at the Phasing Line podcast. You just, yeah. At, I think it's at sign Phasing Line. I don't know. I just set that up like five minutes ago. So how <laughs> much emotional? No. I made our logo using f- uh, not Photoshop. I didn't pay for it. I made it in um, what's it called? PowerPoint. PowerPoint. I made it in PowerPoint, PowerPoint. <laughs> which is a slides pr- a program for yes. the record. And it's probably subject to change, but I had to make something. But it's there. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to our Twitter and tweet at uh, the the phasing line. You're gonna tweet at N zero SSC. And KC one CWF, uh, all in one like tweet, and you're gonna say I listened for at least like five minutes, yeah. um, and I'm gonna keep track of everybody who listens. And I actually have some awesome Phasing Line podcast T-shirts. Uh, Sterling doesn't even know this. <laughs> what? And we're gonna we're gonna we're <laughs> Wait, gonna what? pick we're gonna randomly pick one person. I literally didn't know this. Uh, Did you make it with is, a Sharpie? Is, because I only had this logo out for... No, we, we, we have a machine at a place oh I work. Oh my gosh. Um, and I'm going to send you one. Can you send me one too? Yeah, you, you're, that, there's already one in the mail for you. But. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyways, but this is a show where we're going to talk about ham radio thingies. Um, you know, we never talked about who we are. So, Sterling, you're like an engineer doing cool things and you have a big boy job. 
and you're engaged and that's engaged with a girl not engaged in ham radio a woman just to make it clear what you mean by engaged <laughs> yep i am engaged to my fiance who supports me every day with my very time consuming and um very underpaid work with the hobby and she both of you enjoy cats right oh, yeah we have two cats charlie oh, yeah. and abby they're the bomb almost everything i do you'll probably see them in the background they're better than ham radio. I started, I started um giving them some cameos in my youtube videos so they're starting to get pretty popular in the in the cat world i know katie allen um WI7YL also has her fair share of cats and it's a constant battle of who has the you know best cats. I think she has more cats than She has than more, but she... it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality. My cats are the best. Her cats are cool too. <laughs> Sorry, Katie, your cats are awesome. Especially the main cat. Really didn't want we like cat. talk about that like nobody be listening to Yes, this is the thing. Cats. This is the thing about this podcast where two young hands in the world go on tangents. Who go on tangents who are um, trying to capture the audience of yeah, younger people or people who want to hear something that is less um, defined. Because I don't, we don't have a topic. Our topic for this episode is introduction. Period. Okay, so and we have a few things to talk. about. What does about. that mean? We we thought of okay, we'll talk about the but who previous contests and st- and then we'll go on random tangents and forget but to talk about the I other Sterling? person. Who am I, What? <laughs> exactly. Everybody knows me. Everybody knows Marty, you. Marty, please you introduce videos. yourself. I mean, everybody already knows you. Anybody? Everybody knows. I am Marty, Mr. Chicken with Fries. Casey one CWF, CWF, Chicken with the Fries. Um, I've been licensed like not that long, almost three years. Um, pretty addicted, but still focus on school. Mm-hmm. I know that I'm in the ninth grade. No, that's that's very much false. Um, yeah. I'm 14, and um, <laughs> we have a lot of fun doing this. I don't I don't get why. I guess one of the um, cool things about podcasting is lids like us can um, just get together and make content. And although people probably aren't listening, um, well, we'll, gonna, we'll get there. Don't worry, Marty. Fun, we'll get there. But I know. I think what the one thing we should really talk about is last or a week and a half ago now. Uh, which was CQ Worldwide Phone, the biggest phone contest of the year. And you made how many contacts? Um, zero. Worth how many points? Z- zero. <laughs> and I made... I don't know how many you made. You won some cookies. Contacts. I know that. You won You beat won the, the Lee family. We're going to have a serious talk about this cookie winning thing. <laughs> we'll get there. I've but, literally never heard in the world of ham radio contesting. I've, I've been in this hobby mainly a contester. I started with Field Day. I, did, I love sweepstakes. And, and you've operated with like the best in the world. And yeah, I, I, I you know, followed uh, w- N0AX's lead because N0AX is his alma mater is, is uh, W0EEE, um, Missouri S&T, which was used to be U- University of Missouri at Rolla. Everybody knows N0AX is the guy who wrote the Ham Radio for Dummies book. And he's been a super, super and important person in my life. And he the Ham Radio life. handbook. Yeah. And he like contests QST. that like... K3LR. And he's, he's starting his own station, too, with uh, an antenna garden. I would say if you compare... <laughs> I'm stealing... Not this. quite a farm. Yeah, I'm stealing like, this what, from... Three uh, towers? From, uh, oh, what's his name? Christian from 100 Watts and a Wire. He also has an antenna garden when you compare it to K9CT or K3LR or W3LPL. So. Ward has been... Con- the N0AX has contested from K9CT, I believe. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, without a doubt. He's contested from everywhere. K, even K3LR, Tim Duffy's super station, one of the best stations in the mm-hmm. world. Ward has contested on like the beach with like with Sean Kutzka. Yeah, PX9X. I think it was Puerto Rico or PJ. Puerto Rico. They did sweep, sweepstakes, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. They were both without there's their shirts because it was like, you know, yeah. 900 degrees outside. Yeah, there's a and, very good picture of them on social media where they, they had a lockout system. So only one station would transmit, transmit at a time. Yeah. It's part of the rules. Like you can only you have swear and right. Yeah. What was it? Point swear and laugh. I don't know. Yeah. There was there was pointing. There was swearing. There was yelling. Don't transmit. That's my. It's my run. It's my call. Because in this in the sweepstakes, you can only have one transmitter. Transmitted signal. Ac- oc- ac- no, excuse me. Active. A- oper- what's the word? Transmitting. You can only have one transmitted signal on the air at a given yeah. time that doesn't mean you can only have one radio yeah you can have two radios you can have a hundred million radios it's just one can only transmit at a time a good friend of mine crossy k1lz at lima zulu um did a multi-single which is a great seg- a segue actually um for cq worldwide ssb a week and a half ago so that's one transmitted signal at a time plus another signal can be transmitted at a time as long as it's a multiplier that you're working mm-hmm. uh you can work multipliers um, also on a second signal. 
two total transmitted signals at a time can be worked. Um, and they had six radios. So what, what they do is they have two run radios that they will both listen and pull out call signs on the same frequency. Mm-hmm. Or they alternate running back and forth, but typically on the same frequency. Uh, then you have two more, or the other four stations can be configured for a variety of uses, but typically you have two more stations which are interlocked with the run stations in the same band. Um, so they're listening, say maybe you have four radios on 20 meters, and out of the four radios, only one can transmit at a time, and those are just calling, tuning, tuning multipliers and QSOs up and down the band. Mm-hmm. And then you have two more transmitters. Those are separate from each other, but they're interlocked together, and those are typically your multiplier radios. So they have like six radios, two transmitted signals. That was my head Mind exploding. Blown. Yep. <laughs> Let, let's talk about what we did for the, or I did for the. Yeah, contest. talk about your cookies. How did you win cookies for a contest? So we'll get we'll get to the cookies, but I did single operator, high power, SO two R assisted. How do you how do you run two radios with one? Per- so you're dealing with two. You're dealing with two VFO knobs. You have two different ham radios that are totally disconnected from each other except for i mean whatever computer thing you have going on but how do you do you listen to one thing in one ear and another in the other and are you like so it's more complicated than that because you can toggle which radio you transmit from and which radio you listen from so typically you one like i i like to use the left radio as my run radio so i'll always be calling cq on a band Mm -hmm. and running means calling cq yes so you go cq Um, cq cq this is Kilo, Charlie, Wanch, Charlie, Chicken with Fries, or in zero S Sierra, Sugar, Santa, Charlie, uh, calling CQ. And then your other radio. I tune around the bands, and I'm either clicking uh, spots on the spotting networks, because I'm assisted, Mm -hmm. which means I can use spotting networks. Which means, basically, if somebody works a station, they can go spot it, and then that will tell everybody else who is assisted... But like when you when you work a station, you can spot them and announce to everybody contesting that this station is on this frequency at this time. Go get them. And then and typically what happens when that happens is you get something called a packet pile. Yep. Say that three times fast. So what a packet pile is, is that it's a pile up, but it comes from packet. So packet in the in the olden days, instead of having an Internet spotting network, it was linked radios uh, using a packet two meter radio. As soon as somebody spots you, typically for if I'm on U.S. operator, the big thing is getting spotted in Europe, because oftentimes getting spotted in Europe means you get a big pileup, right? That's like five seconds long. Yeah, and and it will last, yeah, very short. And that's really cool, and it's and it's really fun to be on the other side of that, which I wasn't because I didn't fun, operate. But you know it when it happens. And the the worst thing is, say I get spotted as K1VR, my call sign. And then 10 minutes later, I get spotted as K1ER, not K1VR. Somebody messes And I get up. another packet pile up of the same people. But because I already worked them, they're now duplicates. Dupe. And logging them again doesn't dupe. give me any help. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. And like there's an there's a interesting technique in contesting whether or not you work the dupes or you don't work the dupes. Um, because if you work a dupe, it really doesn't mess with your score. It's just, it does, though. It, it, it makes it If fast. you bust their call sign, if you mess up the call sign, you type it in wrong when you're working a dupe, yeah. you could lose points. True that. But at the same time, if you don't log the dupe and you busted the call sign the first time, you might lose a multiplier. Mm-hmm. So I log all dupes. Right. And after the end of the contest, you just send, the, send your log to the people and then they take care of it and dupes they'll work it all dupes aren't a detriment like you can work dupes all day long but they add nothing to your score unless like marty said it actually fixes something so and your your logger will tell you when you type in k1 it will show you okay you were at k1 vr k1 qd k1 qxy and you can see in there you were k1 xm kq1 f etc yeah and and then you can see like exactly who you worked and you can and if you type in the full call and then it'll say dupe do not log or and you can override that or it it doesn't say that it just kind of grays out the call and says dupe, dupe. Like, really loudly really it's the really same brightly. thing as working as cq worldwide working people that are in your zone in your country say i'm in the u.s um and and you wanted I'm to try to work another u.s station and i already and i need to work another u.s station after i have the multiplier um it then becomes a zero point contact. It doesn't benefit me. And that's somewhere where you never want to log the contact because there's never a chance it'll help you. But I mean, you would want to log it because that's 
probably going to help them get a point or something, wouldn't you? But if if you bust the call sign and just hurt you, I yeah, never log those people. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Mm. I am learning so, so much. Like I, I like contesting, but but this young young whippersnapper has really taught me a lot in this one single first twenty minutes of the episode. So I hope you yep. guys are learning something too, and I hope it's not too crazy. And if I'm boring you, you know, we so don't know. If we're boring, to talk about. send us a tweet saying you guys are too boring. You should stop. Get off the internet. <laughs> but the way to really tell us what you want to hear is tweet at us. Or, you know, send me a like QSL card to my QRZ. Yeah. We're good on QRZ. We always like getting your QSL cards. That would be kind of cool. It's a, yeah. You could collect QSL cards. Cool. I know I listened to a podcast called Hello Internet and they collected postcards from all over the world. So maybe we could like, they did a flag refer, a logo referendum. So they voted on a new logo. And um, to um, play at the New Zealand flag referendum, who are trying to get a new flag like designed for their country, and they had everybody from around the world get uh, send postcards with their uh, ballot. Basically, their postcard was their ballot, and then um, um, they spent the whole episode counting votes, and it was really cool. And maybe we could get QSL cards and do the same thing. Can you say what you do for a living? Yes, I won't say exactly where I work, but I work for a company in St. Louis. That builds very fast jets for many customers, including the U.S. Uh, Air Force and the Navy and many countries. And I'm a radio guy. So these pilots, these people who need to, who are flying the jets that are very fast and have guns on them, need to talk. So they have radios and antennas. And I'm a radio and antenna guy. So I work on the communications so he team lives the dream, guys. for F-15s. Yeah. It's, it's so much fun. And it's like, you know, one thing, one piece of advice I would have is never, never get a job that's exactly what you do as, uh, uh, um, as a passion. Like, don't live passion your passion go away. because you'll, you'll get sick of it. But it's just that, a little that's bit what different. I, that's, that's, I don't know how the people who work in the ham radio industry enjoy ham radio. Right. Yeah. And, and they go home and they forget about They don't get on the air. Because I go home and I forget about work and corporate because it's, it's a little bit different because, you know, I'm dealing with like ICDs and um, DCNs and EOs and VARs and many, many, many other TLAs, which are three letter acronyms um, on a daily basis. So I don't do as much actual radio stuff. So, so we can say you, you work in airplane radio systems. Yep. Airplane yeah. communications avionics is what I would call it. It's what I usually say. Because uh, I don't just work on radios, I work on other avionic systems too. And that's, well, I mean, I that's assume if you're working on different. VORs, you're working on other things besides mm-hmm. just straight radio. Yep. I know that's a little fun. bit of planes. They go, they Maybe, go fast. You know what? We're going to do this year. Are you going to come to Dayton? No. That's the you're sad Dayton? part. I can't come to Dayton because I'll be at a wedding for because I'm 24 years old. And when you're 24 and 25 years old, all of your friends will get married. I'm getting married when I'm 26 in 2018. So it's just the time of the year and I'm really kind of sore about it, but cause I'm missing, go to the wedding. but I'm missing, cause I'm missing the new venue, which will be really cool. And also I'll oh, talk about this really a little disastrous. later about the, the youth on the air Yoda thing. There's a lot of stuff I want to bring to Dayton and talk about Yoda. And it's coming. It's coming really well. There'll be, there'll be some press on that soon. Totes. Um, but I wanted to finish the story about this weekend. Um, so the cookies are a week and a half ago. We'll get to cookies. Um, raw <laughs> scores came out today for the effort. I put around 38 hours in the chair. Eighth place USA out of a couple thousand. Whoa. 10th place North America. 30th world. First place rookie USA. Second or third world, I believe. And I set a new W1 rookie high power record. But anyways, oh, and I made a bet with my friends, the Lee family. This is the cookie Super story. Cool family. This All is the you've been story. waiting cookie for. Story, cookie story. This cookie is probably going to be the title. Clickbait. Clickbait. We're talking about cookies. The cookie story. And you cannot enter to win the cookies. They're too good. I want them for myself. Um, but I made a bet with some friends in Florida, the Lee family. Um, but it's just the t- they're they're a terrific family. Uh, all the kids are homeschooled. They make YouTube videos all the time. Check out Ham Radio. Hamradio.world. Yep. On um, YouTube or I think YouTube they also have Facebook. And the website. It's the domain. Hamradio.world on YouTube. In fact, I just got a notification that they um, got a thing. Also, we should have show, show notes. So, by the way, everything we say, um, talk about will be and in the, the show terms notes. Will be defined. And too. the terms, if we you know have time to define them all, because there's just so many of them, it'll be in the show notes. And I'll figure out how to use show notes 
Maybe. Anyways, so we had a little bit of a friendly competition. They made, I think, 6,000 points. I made almost 2 million. Uh, I won. I Although think you had, had a, a very valiant hand effort. Hand. There was just some, there was some, uh, there was some uh, noise issues. Mm. Um, On your side or their side? So- their side. Gotcha. And they made me these oatmeal cookies. Oh my God, they're so good. Mm. And none of you can have them. They're too you, good. We, so you need to get one for everybody. Okay, so you should send a t-shirt and a cookie. Okay, if you win, you will get a t-shirt and a cookie. Good. T-shirt, cookie. My fiance t-shirt, makes cookie. the best baked goods, cookies, blondies, brownies, Maybe I will send a t-shirt well. and she will send cookies. So we might, we will do something for you. That's for sure. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, we have a lot more to talk about. We will be back here in a moment. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more of the Facing Line podcast. Hey, we're back. Uh, it didn't seem like a break to you, but uh, we spent about 20 minutes discussing the uh, you know future of the hobby and how to fix everything. We and- have all the answers. We have all, you know what, we are going to, the two of us alone have so much power we can save the hobby. True that. And we can save the world. Let's just like pretend that, yeah, the two of us are going to save the world. We can save the world using ham radio. That that's actually could be a thing. Wait, what like, if- and hams can help save the world too. Are you at an Aries or Racy's or actually? Mars I'm, I'm or? getting. I'm uh, getting li- uh, not licensed, but uh, tr- getting trained for that. You have to go for through what? a whole bunch of training, like the FEMA ICS 700, 800, Do you 200 do ICS courses. 100? 100. I'm still. I did ICS 100. And you got to do all these trainings to get yourself certified to be a FEMA or a uh, ARES person, a uh, communicator. Do you guys say A-R-E-S up there? Aries, I hear it both ways. I, I, it, it should be Aries. I think I just say A-R-E-S. Cause I, the one thing you got to say, I am very pleased, especially just like there's so many people who work on the A-R-E-S Aries. I'm saying Aries. Which is the Amateur uh, Radio program. Emergency Service. Emergency, right, but see, it's funny because it's called the Amateur Radio Emergency Service. They actually changed their mission statement not too long ago to reflect more public service in general. Um, right. So not just like taking care of disasters, but bike, like bike, bike, bike races and marathons and, and so triathlons. I mean, they're always going to be A R E S. But it's run by the ARRL, and I think it's really great. Yeah. Um, and it's really cool because like these uh, these uh, courses teach you how to be a very efficient communicator. Like hams are, are well known for being communicators because our radio hobby is about radio communication. Um, but this uh, this these courses help standardize your the way that you do so that, you know, everybody who comes in out of too, like ICS, it's just like, you don't, you don't try to save somebody with a, like a, a, well, let's see, let's find another, like you get trained to do CPR so you can do CPR. If you try to do CPR and somebody without any CPR training, you could kill a person. You could break their sternum and, and end up causing more damage. Uh, or you you have to have training before you go in and administer blood transfusions. Like, you know, you have to go through right. lots of phlebotomy and stuff like that. Same sort of thing with amateur radio emergency services. Everybody should take the training. I mean, maybe even take just the 100 course just for fun because it really teaches you a lot of cool stuff about, you know, how to communicate. And it also teaches you just how to organize people. But it, yeah, that's another. It tells you, teaches you how to organize people, how to manage teams, how to you know, like send in, you know, sp- squads and teams and and uh, different tools that they use to do that sort of stuff like uh, dispatch so it's really cool it's like a cool whole new aspect of ham radio that i've been really wanting to get into never have i've done public service but it's been like some of the things have been really bad because people were either like like fl- flourishing their power as a you know net control or they weren't like you know they all had messed up radios. You know, I think there's a lot of hams who look at Ares or Aries. We could really do a whole show on this as like power. I think a lot of people like power trips flip and a, ego. Yeah. Yes. You, that's you a put big. On that that's big a big yellow thing. reflective vest. And that means you have all the power. And and you put on your you know amateur radio emergency services sticker, Call and that means that suddenly means you have. You're, you're doing great to arrest and detain. It's, it gets crazy, and then that's one of the big detriments to you know, like there, there, there are. We're here to serve, and we're here to support. Yeah. We're not here to take arrest over and control. We're not here to take over. We're certainly not here to give orders. Mm-hmm. It's humanitarian. It's not. 
egotistical, self-centered, blah, blah, blah. And that's, that's like I said, just a problem that ham radio has and every hobby has in their own, right? People, there are bad people and there are good people. There are very few bad people who make the whole thing awful for everybody by doing one terrible thing. For example, in Indianapolis, this ham was, um, or even in New York City, these people are like jamming police and EMS and um, and late, latest news is in Bangladesh or in India somewhere, there was a similar sort of thing where um, maybe not hams, but hams were being interrogated about the them jamming and interfering with communications by public served service, served agencies. So that's pretty bad. And so we'll talk about that. That's, you know, here and there, because this is what this podcast is all about. I think even if you're not going to be involved with your public service agency, to at least know what's going on, you know, monitor, say there's an earthquake. Yeah, I'm, I'm just amazed with how hams can kind of do, how we can help and not hurt. And I think it's important to kind of figure out what our place in that system is to best support served agencies. But yeah, it's really cool what Ham Radio does and what Ham Radio has helped in the, the world of disaster recovery and also public service, like bike races, rally races, that sort of stuff too. Rally races. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's fun you get a free ticket to the behind the scenes to go to a rally race did you do that yeah and that's kind of like some people debate about whether or not there was commercial interest but the because like you're basically volunteering for a um company like rally america is the company that runs these autocross rallies which are like Ken block travis pastrana these like international rally racers with souped up cars go and uh run around with their cars they hire ham, they don't hire they have volu- hams volunteer to do communication support which basically run the whole race and they have uh, net control which is basically the entire stage coordinator like but we're volunteering ourselves for commercial yeah things. and it's totally not like we don't have pecuniary pecuniary interest which means we don't we're not getting paid for it still i don't we're think doing that's it for cool. our own we're all, our own benefit that we do get benefit by by making ourselves better because we've learned like myself personally i've learned so much about how people communicate, people's how people mess up their radios get messed up. You know where to put people in a mountain situation and like where where like you know there's no cell phone coverage here, but there's lots of mountains and lots of hills. Um, it taught me a lot about mobile repeaters. Speaking and, like, about like mobile repeaters and like the internet and cell phones, kids like the internet, and you did something really cool with a bunch of kids this summer. Oh yeah. I did. It was really we, we, fun. We touched on it briefly. We said you went to Europe to do Yoda. Yes. Yoda is called Youth on the Air. It's known as Youth on the Air or Youngsters on the Air. That's what they so call it. So is Youngsters, in, uh, that's the Region 2 thing. Yeah. It's, uh, no, Region 1. Yeah, region right. One. Region 1. Thank region you. 1 is Europe and um, a little region bit of two is us. Western, like Russia, uh, Eastern, yeah, no, Western Russia and Africa. We are Region 2 and Asia and Oceania and like Australia is Region 3. So in region one, they have this thing called Yoda, which is youngsters on the air. Which is awesome. It is really cool. So what they did, and they do a lot of things, by the way. They've been doing this for approximately five or six years. They yeah, have they're a, way ahead of us in region than region two. Yeah, in it's terms of youth and ham radio. They have this thing called um, the, the, the Yoda camp. And it's a week-long excursion or week-long camp in a place in Europe. They picked Austria this year. Last year, they were at... Oh, I got a guess now. Italy? Or maybe they were in um, Estonia. I don't, I don't know. They were in Estonia. They've been in the uh, Netherlands. They've been in Italy, Finland, and they've been in Austria. I don't know. I'm kind of fuzzy on it because it's been a while. But um, basically, the idea is you have 100, and 100 plus young hams my age, between the ages of 15 and 26, come in for a week-long ham radio camp. We were held up, held up in a hostel, like a youth hostel, which could hold all of us and then a couple other youth um, groups for other various things. They brought in a contest station, the DP6, the Delta Papa 6 Tango mobile contest station brought in a like massive mobile antenna, like a military mobilized HF antenna tower. Power? That was 100, it was 40 meters tall, which is 100, almost 100 feet. If I'm mis- not mistaken, that's no, that's like 120 feet. It's really tall, and they had a big opti beam antenna, and they had a couple of dipoles, and they had all of this multiplexed into six different HF stations with the top of the line, like like a, a Yesu uh, FT um, 3000. They had a Kenwood TS 990. They had ICOM 7800 series. They Those had, are fun. Uh, 7851s probably. Yeah. 
7851s, and they had the Flex Radio 6700, which was so cool with the Maestro. Um, but they also had they had four HF stations. They had two UHF or VHF UHF stations. One of them was for Earth Moon Earth, and I used Earth Moon Earth with a single like 12 element or a two 12 element beams pointed at the moon to do Earth Moon Earth. They had meteor scatter. They had all kinds of things. This whole entire week we did activities. We built antennas. We did soda summits on the air. We went, literally hiked up to a mountain. It's hams doing hammy things with other people who are like-minded. Yeah, absolutely. And they That's had the epitome of awesome. They had um, um, workshops. They had dances. They had like rave parties. They had campfires. They had both the ham radio side of things. So you could also be humans. And they also had the social side of things. So all of us had a lot of fun getting to know each other's cultures, each other's countries, each other's food and drink and costume and, and apparel and that sort of thing, stuff. We had an international night because this is all of Europe, all of um, uh, um, Africa and Did you uh, get any bees, any Chinese? No, because this was, so this so far has only been IRA Region 1. And this and last you. year in Austria was the first year that we had, a, uh, they had an American team and myself and Sam Rose, KC2, LRC, went and it was a lot of fun and we went free of charge um we paid for our um um alcoholic beverages our our beer at the bars which was cool really good like best beer i've ever had ever and uh we also paid for souvenirs and some groceries um here and there but uh, and and what did you guys where did you guys stay what were the accommodations like i said it was a youth hotel called the oberweim jugend hotel i don't know how i sound like an idiot trying to make a make uh, pronunciations in random languages that I don't know, but it was really cool. It was like a dorm type scenario. There was four beds in each room. We, we roomed with two Slovenians, which were the coolest guys I've ever met in ham radio. I forget. They don't have a drink, right? But there was Rook and there was Matek and yes, they know how to drink. Everybody knows how to drink. They had um, they well, had a the party. Slovenians know how to like exceptionally drink well, though. I don't know. I think the Hungarians had it or, better. Or the Russians, the Russians. They, the Polish had their brilliant smooth vodka, and their uh, the Hungarians brought in their own homemade schnapps. Everybody was competing. <laughs> the Croatians had really good aged wine and cheese. Um, the the Belgians brought in their beer. The Germans also had like Helles and their amazing German beer. Other beers, but what the Slovenians brought in was like this. This 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 hawk of pork called prosciutto, which is prosciutto, and they take a they take a pork leg, they cut it off and they hang it up for a year to dry, they, they, after covering it and um, soaking it in brine like a like a saltwater mix, and they spice it, they season it, and for an entire year in a dry cellar, they let it dry out, and it was so good, it like melted in your mouth. With a, like a little bit of wine, oh, it was so good, mm. so good. But yeah, that's that's really that was so much fun. And aside from the social part, we also did a bunch of ham radio. We contacted the ISS. We went to different. We did a castle. We went to a castle and activated it for castles on the air. We went Is that to an a ice thing? cave. Yeah, it's a thing, big Kosa? thing in Europe. Coda castles Coda. on the air because um, it's just like Iota, the islands on the air, Soda or Nipota national parks on the air. Which we've been doing this year, which was a lot of which fun. Which has been terrific. We are going to do a Napota show. Yeah, I did a video on um, 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 the uh, the so, Arch. I did yes, I activated you had the Arch like, with some friends of mine from the you had St. Louis what? Radio you had Club. You had selfie stick video? Oh, I took all, yeah, I, I took all kinds of video and uh, you put have it a on GoPro, my YouTube right? channel. Yep, you GoPro and a point and shoot, so... I'm not looking to make any big bucks on YouTube. I just love to share. I'm not, Has it made you I'm not money? much of an operator. Not much. It's made, I've, I've gotten AdSense on it and I've got a fair number of subscribers, but those subscribers are not very recurring viewers. So typically I only get like a hundred to a thousand views, but occasionally I have a video that gets like 10,000 views or 50,000 views. If I do a Beofing, something regarding like really common cheap radios. Um, but since I got 849 subscribers, so I made like $700 in the last, since 2009. So that's been almost, what, seven years, eight years, which isn't much. hundred bucks a year. Yeah. I get a, I get a check every time I make a hundred bucks and, and it's really kind of neat to get a little bit of a kickback for that, but I don't do it for that. It's not you know? for the money. Yeah, I do so it because I want to share pitch right an now. idea. This is never idea, has never left my brain. Until now. Until now. So do you know what WRTC is? Oh, absolutely. 
Absolutely. World so, Radio Sport Team Championship. I always get that confused. I'm like, World Radio Sport Tele Champion? Yeah, WRTC, World yeah. Radio Sport Team Championship. Exactly. It's the contesting Olympics. Every four years. In Every fact. four yeah, years. It was in Boston. It's going to be in time. Germany. Mm-hmm. 2018. You have to you have to try for like three years to get there. There's yeah, you have to qualify. Just months. like the Olympics, you have to qualify and prove your worth by submitting scores for um, points or submitting your scores for every contest, that major contest like CQ Worldwide, sweepstakes, and um, but even even okay, we'll call them stupid contests, but less less yeah, popular. WAE ones. worked all Europe. The Russian DX contest. There's some more obscure ones like that. Yeah, and only sixty teams of two can make it. And that might that change. And there's about like 60. some sponsored teams in there. You know, you could pay about your ridiculous. You could pay a ridiculous amount of money to go, and you know, right? I mean, you're probably doing that anyway because this is a hobby, right? <laughs> it's just a hobby. There's they get a lot of sponsors because they have twenty. They have those sixty stations all with a little tower and a tribander and a dipole, all with the same equipment. Well, you can bring in your own radios, but all with the same antenna equipment. Watts. Typically a tri-bander for the high bands. Yeah, and all within the same general geometric area so that you null out any um, terrain gain or you null out, like you don't put them on, a, put one guy on the ocean and another guy in a valley. And Everybody's you know, on the same when WRTC field. was in Boston, they spent years deliberating over sites. Yeah, Testing it's so data with skimmers, analysis, models. They, they really do a good job. Yeah, and there's um, a big book on it too. The, the um, Contact Sport and 3BB is book. And uh, 9V1YC, James, uh, who's a fantastic cinematographer, uh, produced an amazing documentary on it on 2014. I haven't even watched that. It's worth a watch. I'm going to go watch it. very, very well done. All right. Um, But here's my idea. Let's hear it. Sort of like Yoda. So imagine people, youth from all over the world, converge somewhere. Then everybody's randomly split into teams of two. Doesn't. There's, there's, there's definitely a way to fairly do this. Haven't thought this out completely so that people, there's a good cross of skills that, you know, there's not a ton of advantages. And then each team is given a workshop. The only thing you walk in with is your radio, your computer, and a power supply, each operator. You're given a workshop with coax and like a couple tower sections and aluminum and wire. You see where this is going? I see where this is going. So you're you, asking, you're basically going to have You have a, 72 hours to build a station, and then everybody mm, competes. To build a station, put it on the air, get it so running, and get So it's not just competing. operator skill. Maybe you're not an operator, but you're a station builder. It's sort of, it's like field day. It's like field, field day, day in 72 hours, but a contest WRC. with youth and a really good time to bond. Mm-hmm. Or get really mad. <laughs> I can see fun? people getting real mad and real angry at, uh, but I you know, think no, put that cable be, here. I think there definitely has to be an uh, an element of elmership and supervision and leadership. Oh, absolutely. From people what they know what they're doing. But I think that would be really cool. Yeah, that's a good idea. I wish I had good ideas like that. (laughs) You're the one who's going to bring Iota, not Iota. uh, Yoda. Yoda. Yeah, so if I, uh, to continue on my my thing about Yoda, that's in IRA Region 1. And guess what IRA Region region 2 and 3 have? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. They have, but they have Sterling Coffee November they have Zero. A sugar, few sugar child. very inspired and passionate, and also very busy uh, young hams who very want busy. this to come to I region, I U region two and three, and we're in two, and we want to see thing places, uh, um, clubs like the A double or L or um, even the local clubs like I will, I'll call a SLSRC to the St. Louis Suburban Radio Club to introduce youth to uh, their committee ship or their board so that they always right. have somebody there. We have, a, we have a local youth club in town, the CCARC, the Clayson yeah. Amateur Radio Club. And like Bark Jr. and Boulder, the Boulder yeah. Amateur Radio Club, they have a youth ham radio club. Um, and I really want to see more colleges and, and uh, elementary, middle, high schools, mainly like high school and colleges to get more ham radio clubs too because that's where, well, that's like an untapped resource of engineering students and international students and um you know people with just that growing interest that you know finding themselves sort of thing the one interesting thing i see from reading over a lot and hundreds of survey data entries from different surveys the average entrance point for ham radio 25 30 40 years ago was a 13 year old boy who saw an antenna asked what it was passed his novice and got on the air Mm -hmm. wasn't very familiar in the wasn't an engineer, but maybe it led him to a career in engineering. Now, 
the entry point is a 35 year old maybe they're an ee they either think it's cool and want to get it to advance their career or they're into emergency communications or maybe they even think about contesting but it's people who are already in it Mm -hmm. or or it's and it's starting to change like that um because right now the average age of ham radio is kind of up in the air. There's no real statistic it's on it. It's hard to properly compute it in a meaningful. Probably way. say yeah, because we don't. The FCC doesn't really keep track of age, um, like other you know people do. But I'd argue fifty-five. Yeah, it's pretty high. But things are changing with Hackaday, um, with um, Hack Five, and uh, Shannon. Um, Shannon Morse just put out a Morse. great show. Which is really coincidental, Morse, Morse, Morse code, ham radio. <laughs> and because Hack 5 is a geeky network. Yeah. And, you know, the ham, ham Nation also being featured on This Week in Tech, TWIT. One of the, the, the biggest internet, the biggest ham technological internet po- podcasting empire of all time, headed by the amazing Leo Laporte. Right. And then you got... Um, people like Linus Tech Tips and I think D News and other. There's a lot. There's. It seems like Ham Radio is really coming uh, to a head in terms. You know what of I'm gonna say? I'm disappointed. New people. What? You know, Make Magazine. Yeah. You read Make Magazine growing up. They started a while ago to produce content on Ham Radio, and I got very excited, and it never went anywhere. It just kind of fizzled out. It's it's not something that you can really hit the nail on with one newspaper article, one video. Mm-hmm. So I've learned, like I, I failed oh, many learned. videos a time before I hit something good. And, and did you know that, that really Sterling to tried to enter the ARRL video contest? <laughs> um, what am I? Well, yeah, this, this is a funny story. And he took and he had to like record an intro like 70 times, but the intro itself was longer than the minimum, the maximum entrance time for the whole video. Yep. So the AWRL hosted this video competition in 2013 or 2011, sometime in that time frame. You were still a four-year-old. You could, you had to submit a five-minute video on YouTube about ham radio, um, and I don't think it. Really, I think it had uh, a topic about the first contact or how did you get into ham radio or something like that. So I did this really over-the-top engineered video on the first contact of a lot of W zero triple E hams. Um, who never was on a never got on an HF radio until that video, and my introduction was about five minutes, six minutes long. But Just unbeknownst to me, unbeknownst hallway. to me, with this like tacky handy talky strapped to your belt that you probably never. Yeah, used. there was a tongue in cheek like silliness to it. Like I wasn't being, I wasn't taking it completely seriously. But it turned out to be really. Do you take really anything popular. really seriously? Nah, this podcast, for example. <laughs> So anyway, the first contact video, I got through the uh, intro and I started getting some ham, some new people behind the mic and they made their first contact and I had some commentary or something in the background. I barely remember. I need to go and review it. The video was 17 minutes long and unbeknownst to me, the requirement for the video was five minutes. But yeah, that video is one of my most like viewed videos in all of my YouTube fandom. And I don't even know why. Like I am just showing people talking on the radio. It's not me reviewing a radio. It's not me doing anything cool with radio. I mean, I guess getting some people licensed and uh, on the air is pretty cool. But as it goes, I don't know. I guess it got shared around a lot or something. Uh, the AWRL did pick it up and they had an honorable mention. But since it didn't make the five minute mark, it, eh. But I still had a lot of fun and... I shared something really close to me to the world, which is all that matters. I'm not much of an operator. Like I like, I love contesting and I love satellites and, but I'm really into promoting and progressing the ham radio hobby. You know, um, I'm one of those darn nasty, filthy progressives, so to speak. So hopefully nasty we woman. won't lose too many subscribers and video, um, uh, not video podcast listeners on that. And speaking of subscribe, do that. Subscribe to us on iTunes. How do you subscribe to us? iTunes, we're there. Phasing Line Podcast. Stitcher, we're there. Phasing Line Podcast. Go to phasinglinepodcast.com. Click the RSS and put it into your favorite podcasting app, which you should be able to find us. We're on Overcast and, uh, like I said, iTunes and on, what's it called? Pocket Casts. And but any podcatcher that takes an RSS feed. Exactly. Well. Anything will work. We're there. We're on Libsyn. Um, just look for the Phasing Line podcast on Google and tweet at us, like we said, at Phasing Line on Twitter. Phasing Line podcast on Facebook, too. 
Yeah, we have it everywhere. I spent about literally a whole night getting this all together and it looks super cool. And I made a logo in PowerPoint. So you know what? Sterling and I are going to stop and you are going to go find us at all our social medias and say hi. But tell us what you want us to do with this. Yeah. This is, this is your show. And this is also my show. <laughs> and it's my show. But and, and we're doing this for our listeners. We're not doing this for money or for profit or for any gain other than our own egos. And if you and... have a comment you don't want to put on Twitter, <laughs> maybe you want to sponsor, maybe you want to critique, maybe you want to tell us we're so crazy we need to leave. Maybe my audio sucks. Maybe you're seeing our videos through your mind. Maybe I don't you really, really don't know. like me brushing my beard. Yeah, but you could like find our info there or also go to qrz.com and look at both of our call signs. KC1CWF. And in zero SSC. But we'll see you right here in your earbuds, mowing your lawn, taking your shower, on your way to school, cooking dinner, whatever you do. Next time here on The Phasing Line. And then. And typically what happens when that happens is you get something called a packet pile. Yep. Say that three times fast. Packet pile, packet pile, packet pile. No. No. You're not a chicken. <laughs> oh, that was really bad.